Hey, Steven is here and welcome to my Pixel 7a series. Today I've got something special for you. As you might know, I have already covered how the Pixel 7a performs against the iPhone 14 Pro. So this time let's see what it's capable of, not only when it comes to photos, but also when filming videos. The phone has only two cameras, but I'm gonna show you that it is more than enough for regular day-to-day -day use. And to prove it, let's talk about its video capabilities. And even though the ultra wide lens suffers a little bit from chromatic aberrations and does not have as good of a quality as the main camera, with enough lighting it produces really good results paired with Google AI algorithm that helps to enhance the image even more. And I would say the phone reproduces colors in a way that it adds a little bit of saturation and vibrance to the image and it performs the best during bright day. In that case, image quality is really good. Just see for yourself, the difference between the main camera and ultra wide isn't that big to be honest, but the extra wide field of view allows you to get more in your frame compared to the main lens. Although it is important to mention that it's only the case when you have enough lighting. Once the lighting isn't sufficient, it is better to use the main camera. But overall, after using this lens for cinematic videos and vlogging, it feels like it produces a softer image than the main camera. See for yourself if you can notice the chromatic aberrations in the corners and softer image and let me know down in the comments if it is visible for you. Just write this comment down below. Now how does the main camera perform? Without a doubt, if we talk about photos, it's very close to flagships like iPhone 14 Pro or S23 Ultra, which you can see for yourself in minority comparison video from the Pixel 7a series. But if we talk about the video, there just few things that stand out about this phone for me. First of all, the image is very nice and vibrant, and I especially like the quality when filming during bright sunny days. Honestly, if you told me it was filmed on the iPhone 14 Pro or some other flagship, I would believe you because it's that good and it looks more punchy in colors. Maybe the optics isn't as of high quality as on more expensive devices, but I would say it is enough to film travel content or even capture some cinematic footage. The phone lets you to film in 4K up to 60 frames per second, but I feel like a lot of people do not use 60 frames per second as they should. Because of my personal filmmaking experience, I use 60 frames per second most of the time so I can slow down the footage in post when editing. Because if you film in in slow motion in built-in mode in that case the results are really poor and seriously do not use that mode at all on any phone however if you film in 4k 60 fps and then slow down the footage on your computer in that case the video will be sharper the best and most crisp image will be achieved though if you film in 4k 30 fps just have a look So if you're planning to use this phone or capture some day-to-day -day activities or travel content, I think the main camera is just awesome for that. Let me know what you think about the main camera down in the comments below. And I cannot talk about the video capabilities without mentioning the image stabilization. The phone offers different levels of image stabilization, and I covered each separate one in details in my first video of the series. But long story short, it's very decent. Here's the comparison. This clip was filmed on mobile gimbal in vertical mode. All the axes are locked, so the phone is not tilting or moving at all. And this video is handheld. And there is a little bit of shake here, but overall I would say it's very good. I did try to move however without making my steps too prominent, but I would say it's a very good result. And to understand the difference with gimbal and handheld, here's side by side comparison. Obviously the gimbal clip is better, but if you want to film something on the go, the results aren't too bad to be honest. Now whatever video comparison I make, there's always someone mentioning iPhone in the comments. And my Pixel 7a series is no exception. That is why I want to emphasize that there are few features on the Google phone that make it a better choice over not only iPhone but other phones as well. One of those is the ability to manual control white balance, unlike iPhone here, you can make your picture warmer or cooler depending on the mood you going for and it is very handy and easy to understand all the settings and even for someone who have never used more advanced cameras before so even though there is no advanced manual mode settings here for your exposure controlling ISO shutter speed like on the more expensive Samsung phones but it's still more advanced than two times more expensive iPhone flagship now let that sink in the photography features on this device are top-notch and if in the video department this phone has harder time and is a little bit 
behind the competitors. When we talk about the photos though, this phone is extremely close to flagship level and sometimes even exceeding even pricey iPhone 14 Pro. And it's all thanks to Google software because this is where the Pixel 7a truly shines. So first there are two cameras on the back of the phone, super wide and wide angle. But you can also digitally zoom in on the main camera to get a closer photo and the high megapixel count of the main camera along with built-in algorithm makes those crop photos look really crisp and usable. Keep in mind, I have not edited these photos at all. Yes, obviously you can go crazy with the editing, but for my taste, the processing of the photos made by the phone looks so good that I just like to leave it as it is. The photos do not look like they were tweaked by the software really. What do you think? Maybe some of you noticed that super wide angle lens has this distortion in the corners, but I think it's not a big deal really, at least for me. Oh, I forgot to mention the phone can focus pretty close, which is enough to capture some macro shots. Obviously it's not as good as using third-party macro lenses on the phone, but it is enough to film some insects or take photos of flowers. So I think the Pixel's capabilities is more than enough for that. Now when I said I have not edited these photos, I meant that I did not adjust any color or brightness. I did however use some of the AI features of the phone. And at first I thought it was a little bit gimmicky, like not useful feature at all, but once I tried it myself I really loved it. And I think there is not enough people talking about it from the photography perspective. When they announced this phone, the magic eraser was one of the key points and you could hear about it from everywhere, but now it just disappeared from the narrative. But it is here on the phone and it is awesome. Imagine you can remove any unwanted subject from your photo within seconds and it works almost perfect. I do not know why, but as you can see, I'm really hyped about this AI feature. So let me know guys, maybe you would like separate video on Magic Razor and how it works really, because I already filmed it, but I'm not sure whether I should post it. So leave a comment down below if you want it. By the way, if most of the photos you are taking is of food, I have to say that the results look very natural without oversaturating or over sharpening. It just looks good. So I would say if the videos taken with the Pixel 7a are on a saturated and vibrant spectrum, then the photos definitely are on natural and close to life look. And same with the low light. You know how most of the phones just lift the shadows up to make the photo look without contrast or anything really, but with the Pixel 7a again, it looks more natural. And same with the portrait mode. Yes, there is no fancy optics on this phone, but the software just works and you can take clear shot with great separation between the subject and the background. And what is awesome is that you can make a portrait shot out of any photo. So for me personally, most of the time what I do is just use the main camera and then if I want to add a portrait effect with blurry background, I would do it in editing the picture right on the phone. Now the selfie camera is probably one of the weakest points on this phone in terms of image quality. It looks rather soft, even if all the smooth and skin effect disabled. So if it is important for you, then keep that in mind that selfie camera camera isn't something exceptional here. One cool thing that maybe helps to make up for it though is the voice isolation feature that I covered in my Pixel 7a series during comparison to the iPhone 14 Pro. So even though the overall sound quality is better on the iPhone, once again the software comes to the rescue and if you're filming in a loud environment then the voice isolation helps to cut out all those sounds. So if we take something like S23 Ultra or iPhone 14 Pro as a modern day gold standard of camera quality, then Pixel 7a will be somewhere here in the video department and it will be very close in the photo performance, sometimes even outperforming those flagships, not because of the good optics, but because of Google's processing software. So overall, I'm still very impressed with this phone, especially at this price point. Now if you want to see more of the Pixel 7a, then make sure to watch my whole series about the phone. Click right here to watch this video next and as always subscribe so you will not miss the next one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in in another video. Bye bye. Oh, also here I see on the Google Pixel phone there is a voice enhancement feature. It's turned on. Maybe it also helps to bring out more of the voice frequency.